In this video, we're going to look inside this giant box right here at the Trumpeter 30 second scale EA18G Growler. Hey guys, welcome back. Richie here, and in today's video, we're going to take a look inside this beast, which is a uh, big heavy box. It's the 30 second scale Trumpeter Growler. Now, at the time we're doing this video, I don't see any other videos on YouTube looking inside a box of this guy, so I thought, mm, why not? I just recently received it, very excited, and I've really, not really had a good look inside yet, so let's kind of want to share it with you guys. So, those of you who watched my channel will know I recently completed the MiG-29 SMT, also 30 second scale from Trumpeter. That was a beautiful kit, went together really well. I didn't read any aftermarket stuff, had full detailed engines, all I had it was a resin seat, and that was it. Um, so I'm interested to see this kit here, see if that's similar. Um, there's not a ton of stuff out for this one in terms of aftermarket, but hopefully you know you get quite a lot of stuff in the box. The box is huge, like I said. Um, let me kind of show you around the box now before I switch the camera, because once we're on the, the bench, there's no way I'm going to fit this whole thing in the, in the shot. So, just a couple of the markings. Again, kit number 03206. And that's the answer. So you've got three markings. You've got what? You've got the George Bush VAQ 141. Um, looks like you've got the Shadowhawks, high viz and low viz. And then the VAQ 129, which was that one. So you get some photo etching. Oh, it's got so heavy. So you get some photo etching it too. So, um, yeah, so there you go. So. Let's take a look right now. So I'm going to switch the camera and let's take a good rummage through the box and see what you get. Okay, here it is. A beast of a box. I've got my camera on the highest tripod. It's probably about six foot high. On the widest lens I have, I'm just barely fit the box in. So what I'll do is I'll open the box and I'll get this off, off shot and then we can kind of look at some stuff in closer detail. But I, as I just showed you, I kind of went around and did the, um, the box already. It's too big to kind of look around the sides right now but let me kind of open this guy up Let's see what goodies we've got inside oh, there you go trump do a really nice job in packaging these 30 second scale kits um you can see here we've got a box which is probably specified for the growler so just point out that there are different, several different flavors of this this is off the growler which is just the variant of the f version they also do the e as well and um, so you get all those different kits. The, what I heard is the Growler is the latest version. They've made a few upgrades from the F. So if you do want to do an F, you're probably better buying this Growler kit because it has a, the right kind of number. I'm, I'm not an expert on Hornets, but I think it has the right kind of lumps and bumps and stuff um, to make a more accurate F50, F18F rather than the actual buying the actual F kit, if that kind of makes sense. So I guess we kind of look at some of this stuff. Um, Close to detail, so nicely packaged again. That's the upper fuselage, your lower fuselage, and the canopy, and these nice kind of blocks of ice. There's stuff under there too. Um, well, let's just do this in parts. So that these I'll kind of show you. It's all full of plastic. Plastic in here. That's just the, these are just spaces, and there's some stuff under here. Let me see. Okay. Actually, there's nothing under there. Okay just more screws. So let me, the fact that there's a huge box and instructions at the bottom, let's go through some of the plastic first and we'll look at the instructions at the end if that kind of makes sense. Let me just kind of move this off shot and get stuck in. So we're looking about what, 12 plus the nose, probably about 20 inches long. Nice detail. Turn this light down a little bit, you can see the detail better. Then, as always with Trumpeter, it seems like you get the rubber tires and metal gear, which kind of 
insert that goes inside the plastic. Now, lessons learned from my MiG-29. I, I got resin wheels. Focus. There you go. Um, I got resin wheels and um, these for Mastercasters, and they were a little, didn't quite fit. They were a little bit too narrow compared to the kit ones. So when I tried to add some of the stuff on, it just didn't kind of um, it didn't kind of fit right on the on landing gear. So I'm pretty good with rubber ones for this time around. Also, despite being metal, these aren't the strongest. Mine snapped off a couple of times. Um, so these basically plastic goes around this, super glues on, and it's basically make the structure a little bit stronger but again with the MIG it was a little bit gangly the gear and um, a couple of times the gear did break off when I was kind of moving it around very slightly so just be wary of that. Okay we've got the lower fuselage some detail there but you definitely Spruce it up with some wire and stuff, but again, not bad. We'll see in a minute with instructions, but normally these kind of things, um, you get photo etched to go on top of them, but we'll see. We can get there. Okay, sorry about that, guys. The battery died on my camera. So just switch the camera, the, the battery over, so we should be good to go. So you just, just saw this part. Um, and now let's look at the clear parts. Grab my knife and slice this open. Very nice. Do have a center seam to polish out. Very slight center seam. You see that? But yeah, again, plastic looks good. And I don't need to open this one up, but there's the front. Again, with a slight center seam that he's coming out. Some lights. Just that HUD. And a photo etch. Looks like seat belts. Some other few little bits and bobs, not a ton. Including there. Okay, so let's move this to the side. Okay, there you go. Um, it's gonna focus a little better now. So this is a box which I think maybe distinguishes this from the other some of the other kits, the, the Growler specialty box. <laughs> the let's see what's inside this one. So quite a few sprues. We've got one, two, three. Okay. Okay, this looks like the tub, cockpit tub. Nice detail. Just the instrument panel. Again, pretty good. No problems there at all. Nice crisp plastic. A few ejection pins on the back, but you're not going to see any of this stuff, so it's not a problem at all. Seats. With these. In this kind of scale, I pretty much default, I'd always go for resin seats. Um, to, to get the um, 18F seats will work fine with this one. I don't think they do, the same as it was in the growler. Oop. There you go. Yeah, not bad, decent, but again, a 30 second scale, more for um, resin seats. Well, any scale really, I'm just. Uh, that's pretty much default for me, resin seats. Protective plastic. Two of these sprues the same. Finally, in this box, the engines. 
Okay, so match pair, one obviously each engine. It's pretty basic. Um, if it'll be fine if you want to get closed up, if you want to take some panels off and show this, you probably want to add some wiring. Um, if you check out my MiG 29 SMT 30 second scale build series, you'll see what I did there and my engines. Um, they're a little bit nicer detail in the MiG than these ones. These are pretty plain. Um, exhaust nozzles. Again, pretty plain. There is some detail in there, but I've been inclined to throw in some um, some resin nozzles and aftermarket Aries. Yep, like I said, you get two of those. Okay, so that's what's inside this little like extra box. Now let's look at the main plastic, which we have a lot of. So. Big sprues. Oh, I actually dropped something here. That was inside the box too. So it looks like intakes. You can buy seamless intakes, I've seen, but they're not cheap. They're about $40, $50, I think. They have them on sprue rovers. If you, uh, look, you have avionics bay, which is quite nicely detailed. And one on the other side. Again, nicely, nice service detail. Nice and scale. up so wings. Um, I don't need to get this out of the bag, but you, it's not really much to see. It's just plastic with a couple of panel lines on it. But that's the um, the flaps. Actually, not wings. Sorry, the flaps. You know, the Hornet has a very distinctive um, aircraft. Um, sorry, wing flaps. Next up, looks like we have some of the ordnance. Match pair again, so I'm just going to show you one of these guys. Looks good. Now the fun for me is, once this is done, this review is trying to not only get stuff in the back in the bags, but try to get it back in the box, because that box is jam-packed and it only goes in one way, so fingers crossed I can hit all back in again. Another match pair, these are the um, jamming pods, which obviously the growler is all about. I'm guessing someone, I'm not sure if you use these, we'll check the instructions, but this might be part, well, no, it won't be. I'm gonna say it might be part of the F variant, but the fact that it's on the sprue with the jamming pods, it, this is probably the one you'll use, I guess. This is be the, um, the G variant. This one, again, match pair. Exactly the same. Pylons. Once again, a match pair. A huge 30 second scale. Jeez. <laughs> fuel tanks. Excuse me. So the fuel tanks alone are going to be what? Over six inches long. Again, really nice clean plastic. Um, there's no problems with this at all. There's the, um, you obviously got the ejection pin, ejector pins on the back, but you know, you're not gonna see any of this stuff. It's all in, again, here again, you're not gonna see any, it's all inside. And it wouldn't it, the fear of anything.
Okay, now we're getting to some of the um, smaller pieces, the detail. <coughs> Excuse me. There's the nose. Like, like I was talking about in the other sprue, I'm guessing this one is probably you don't use. This is probably part of the F. And the one on the, with the jamming parts is probably a G variant. So just be careful which one you pick and follow the instructions. There's like a center fuel tank there. Um, radar. So it looks like nose opens. You have the radar. Very nice. And this is your gear. As I mentioned, you have the metal parts, which kind of sandwich inside to kind of strengthen it and the wheels very nice detail on the wheels that's the front front um, gear bay again nicely detailed very good so far this is looking very very good um, working way through a few more bags to go um, it's the wings. Looks like you can do the wings folded too by the looks of it. Looks like they're split, so let's take a look. So, we got here. These are the um, horizontal stabilizers, the tailplanes, I guess. Mm, yep. Very shiny it's kind of hard for the camera to pick up the um the detail but hopefully you can see some of that and the tails again looking really nice some great detail on that Now the wings. Good. This looks like part of the um, if you want it folded to kind of the mechanism. A little plain, but we'll see. Might have other parts for this too. Okay, looking good. Again, nice crisp plastic. The other side, the front, the fuselage, and these are like the wing tips, I guess, which is the part of the fold. Again, really nice. Finally, I'm not going to open these. These like little. These are part of the wing kind of struts and stabilizers, um, for the flaps and stuff, and doors, gear doors, that kind of stuff. I don't need to open that one. Yeah, pretty nice. And I think that is it for the plastic. Let me just check a couple more of these boxes, make sure nothing else is hidden. And nope, that is it. So now let's move on to the books. Again, the trumpets really do a nice job with these colors. Nice big call outs. Um, Kinetic, I hope you're watching. Kinetic, even the gold packs, I can't believe you, you sell kits with black and white color, color call outs. It just sucks in this day and age. But, you know, but trumpets do a nice big, big, nice big double fold out. So this is um, actually, I'll go backwards. So it's sort of A, 
So A here is the VAQ129. Very nice. I actually built the exact same markings in a 72nd scale Hasegawa kit. And on the back, B is the George Bush VAQ141 in the high vis markings. I really, really like this one, the black, like a nice kind of rubber black kind of look. That's really smart. If I, well, if and when I build this, I think I'll definitely go with this one. And this is the same one that low, low vis. Okay. And the instructions. Well, the bottom of the box is a little bent up. And... Okay, so you can see here all the sprues. Just that one little bit of photo etch. So not a ton of photo etch. I know Edward do do an external photo etch pack if you want to add a little bit more detail to it, if that's where you want to go. Again, as always, you know, if you want to take more detail, just pause and take a closer look. I'm just going to whisk through this real quick so you guys can see what's going on. Um, as always, we start with the tub and the seats. Looks like we have decals for the instrument panel. The Again, the MiG-29 just built, they were really nice decals. It looked really good, the cockpit, using that. So I wouldn't need to definitely rush out and buy resin or anything. I think that should be okay, just the seats might need upgrading. Then we start with the the um, nose gear. And a little different. Normally with Hornets, that normally attaches to the bottom and it goes in sandwiches between the fuselages, but it looks like that goes in first with the radar. You have a nice radar here if you want the nose open. Um, so you have the radar and the nose gear goes in. Then engines, gear, again I'll be doing that at the very end, putting the gear in, once everything's built and assembled. And looks like we're working on the main gear bays and the intakes. Then wings, and yep. We do have a nice option of having it folded or out. Now the Hornet doesn't have crazy wingspan, so it doesn't take too much space up, but you can always fold it, which looks very nice too. So that's the options. Then again, the options, I've got it folded. Um, yeah, there's not a ton of detail and there's no more parts. so. I know Wolfpack often do these kind of sets for um, folding sets, so maybe that might be looking for an upgrade. If you're going to fold the wings, maybe look for a, an option. Again, the fit, the, um, hat, the Trumpeter 18F would work from this one too, if you can't find a G. They probably have it under F, the variant, but that would work. So maybe, so far I'm thinking maybe, uh, would need a ton of stuff from looking at the plastic. I'm thinking maybe just some resin seats, the Aries exhaust, and if I can, maybe the folding. If I do the folded wings, look for some a better like a resin pack if it's not too difficult to go in there if it need a bunch of surgery and stuff i'll probably just end up with the kit one try and make it best i can get working the wings and the flaps wings and flaps then the hud goes in and the cockpit goes in the upper fuselage Then the tails, watch your nose, either it open or closed. I'm looking here, it looks like, looks like you can't have it so it kind of swings open or closed. It looks like it's fixed, you can have it fixed open or you can have it fixed closed by the looks of it, by that bracket there, I'm guessing. And sandwiching everything together. So with the way this is built, once it goes on, you're not going to see any of this engine detail. So if you do want to jazz it and see an engine, then you can have, I guess, pull one out, or you can just um, cut one of these panels off. So you can actually see 
some of the detail there. Always kind of waste our time kind of detailing it, I guess. Then after starting to take the um, tails and horizontal stabilizers and the um, burner cans. Gear. And then again, if you can, oh, has the um, avionics bays open. I'm assuming you can do it closed too, but that's obviously has it open. And just the usual um, gear doors. Ladder. Canopy open or closed. And going back to this, it looks like fuel probe has is open, is enough close option. So fuel probe open. And finally the pylons. And the ordnance. So you got AIM 120C, AGM 88s, which are the harm missiles, I believe. And then your pods. And fuel tank. And again it shows you kind of the loadout. That is it. Whew. Quite a lot of stuff. Oh, and you know, no, it's not. I'm not looking at the decals. Jeez. So, two two sets of two packages. So the first one will open. Wow, it's three sheets of decals. So, okay. So the first one. Markings, looking good. So you got that guy. And this guy. read it. One tip with these not no step and that kind of stuff is Edward they have it labeled for the F16 but they do a stencil photo etched stencil set it has all these kind of words where you can just place it down and just spray it on um, with your airbrush. It's like I say it's marked for the F16 but I'm pretty sure most of the F16 markings are gonna be the same for the um, for the for the horn for the hornet too so like no step and that kind of stuff it might be easier than having to go through and um, decal it all. But yeah no, no problem there decals look really good. And we have another one. These, I'm guessing these are for the weapons, probably. God, these are tough to open. There you go. Again, the words are legible, and, Hunt, and Trump and normally have a habit of, especially in armor, of spelling this stuff wrong. Let's see if we can get the focus. It's so small. Uh, oh. It looks like, I don't know if it's real words or not, I'm trying to see in my own eyesight. These ones, I don't think, are real words. It's so small you can't read it. These definitely can read these ones. And there you go. So, wow, what a fantastic kit. My experience with the MiG-29 SMT, which I kept kind of talking about, is um, was a really positive one. It went great plastic, it went together really well. The only thing was um, just dry fitting was the key. Just a few panels and stuff were just slightly too big to kind of go where they didn't have to go. So just a couple of swipes of sanding stick, like a fraction of a millimeter off, and they fit perfectly. Um, it was a really fun and great kit to build. So I'm hoping this one's the same. This is supposed to be a really, this is supposed to be for a um, 30 second scale horn. It's supposed to be, I think, one of the better kits. I know Academy do them too, but you see what amount of stuff you get in there. These retail, I got this one at a good price. I think they normally retail about $140 maybe right now, but the price is always changing. Um, 
again, the box is too big to fit in there. Um, but that's it. So looks a really nice kit. Can't wait to get going on this one. I'll definitely build it at some point. Um, probably not anytime soon, but maybe later on in the year in the, in the fall or the winter. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Any questions as always, please put them below. Um, as always, please like and subscribe and all the usual kind of stuff. And again, this is Richie from RW Hobbies. And I appreciate you sitting through this mammoth kit and the review. And any, as always, any questions, just put them below. So until next time, have a great one. See you later. Bye-bye.